Hello everyone. We're, today we're going to do a Valentine card with a name. I'm simply going to use the name Mom for mine. And all I do is draw out the name or write out the name, fairly large, and then I do some swirls underneath. And after I do the swirls, I'll go and outline. Well, actually, I'm going to put the detailing under the swirls first. And then I'll go and outline each letter. And what I do is just outline to each side of the name I've written. So I, I it's not real thick lettering, but it gives it a kind of fun difference from your regular writing because you'll color that in. And now I'm just doing some flower doodles around the name. This one doesn't end up looking very Valentine looking, so you could use it as a regular card also. Now I'm going to cut off the bottom of the card so that we can trace around it to find an area where we want to place a flower to lock the card in place. So I'm folding it over, I'm tracing the edge, and then I've decided to put the flower in the right hand lower corner. Usually that flower is the largest flower, and I'll add another flower by it. And then I'll, I'm going to add some swirls here, just to give kind of definition where the art ends and the area where you write begins. So I was visiting Walmart and I found these Studio G gems. They're only 97 cents. So if you guys live near a Walmart, you can find those there. Also, the puffy paints were originally found at Walmart, but I also found the Studio G glitter paint, which is 97 cents. And there seems to be more in the tube than there is in the other little squeeze tube. And here I'm going to show you an example of what they look like. I'm lining them up to be in order. But actually, I think that the cheaper paints are more glittery. The downfall with the glittery, the cheaper paints, is they're not raised up as much, as I'm trying to show you that now. The other puffy paints are actually raised up off the page more. Okay, let's get back to our card. We have it drawn out. So now I'm going to start doing the details with my drawing pens. I'm going to start with the Sharpie. And I'm going to go around the swirls here. Now I'm switching over to the brush pen just to give it a little more, more thick and thin. To add interest, I like to do thick and thin lines, and I constantly switch back and forth pens. The only downsides to a Sharpie, just so you guys will know in the, if you're using them for more permanent, the black Sharpies will eventually bleed through even watercolor paper after it'll be a year or 
two or three, but they turn yellow. The back side turns yellow. The front never really changes, just so you know that happens. The brush pen, I have that carbon black ink in, and it does not bleed through ever. So I tend to like to use the brush pen, but I do use a Sharpie on cards because it's a quick way to do the Sharpie. I'm adding some fun little details here, dots. And I'm lining the very edge of the card so that I can have just a definition of where that color will end. And then I'm going to, I start with the Sharpie on the flowers and I just don't like the thick line. So I'm grabbing my multi-ball, which is a lot thinner. And then I'm just going to be doing the details of the flowers with the multi-ball. Continuing doing the deep floral details on the flowers. Adding leaves. As I'm outlining the name Mom, I decide I'm going to do a double outline around it. It'll just add kind of a bright color pop to the card. So that's, I, it's just like an eighth of an inch around the, out, the already outlined letters. It makes more sense when it's colored in. Right now it's kind of crazy looking. And I'm going to finish up the detail on all the little flowers on the front. Okay, I've finished up with the details on the front, so I'm going to flip it over and start outlining the flower on the inside. It's the inside, but it peeks through the bottom, so it's both the inside and the outside. Now this line gets a little thicker than I would like it to be. It's all kind of crazy, but then I decide, oh, I'll just add detail in with another, with my Poshka markers, so it just keeps getting thicker here, so <laughs> bear with me.
all right the details on the lower side are fairly quick so just finishing them up here I have a whole lot of um, watercolor sets, so I am going to use the Koi watercolors for this card. I love the Koi colors. They're for, they're not a, a very expensive set, but I really, they have really great colors. And this is the one with, oh, let's see. 24 colors I believe um so I'm just gonna start with the yellow because with watercolor you usually start light to dark you can break the rules but usually that's your best bet and I'm gonna make this kind of rainbow and as, if you notice I'm adding the darker colors or the next color in the hue a little at a time and I rinse the brush between major color changes. I forgot to have a folded up paper towel so I'm adding the towel there. So what I do is I rinse the brush off, dip in the color, add the color to the next kind of gradation, rinse the brush off, add your next color. It just that's just a process you, and you're trying to work fast enough that the color in front of it has not dried so that they blend really well so you're working a little wet and you're working quickly not as quickly as the video because I've sped up the video here but as you see and I just follow the color wheel it goes from yellow to orange to red to purple to blue to green then back to yellow. So now I'm moving on to the flowers and because this card is going to be brightly colored I start with yellow. When I'm going to do a multicolored card I usually make the inside of the flowers yellow and then I move on to different layers from there. And because the yellow's still wet, I'm skipping and doing the next color, which would be pink. And I'll go back and where that's white there, I'll add orange in a little bit. So as I was getting water for that flower, I realized that I had dripped clear water into the gradation, so I tried to fix it there. And now I'm going to add water in the area of the letters, and then I'm going to kind of drip the purple paint into it or, or drop it into the water. It just makes for a softer look. That The purple in the set is gorgeous, but it's really strong. So... I'm just going to try to use it as light in a light way. So and then I go to the next letters and I'll just wet them first and then drop the purple into them. Now I'm going to continue on after I finish this, this lettering. I'm going to continue on with the flowers. And the reason that you jump around in watercolor is simply because you're waiting for other colors to dry. And so I, I look kind of sporadic with what I'm doing, but I'm just kind of jumping around trying to, to do other things while, while areas dry. So right now I'm just adding one tone of pink 
I'm going to go ahead and add pink down here to the bottom edge, pink and yellow. And I'm wetting the area first because these, these two colors are very staining. So, and it's not always, it's just this set of watercolors, the pink and the yellow kind of stain easily. So if you pre-wet, you can kind of compensate and still be able to lift things out if they're too strong. Right now I'm just kind of, I call it tickling, but I'm kind of blending the two colors together. And I usually rinse my brush, wipe it off on the towel, and then uh, add color. But it looks like I'm mainly wiping on the towel here, but I, I do rinse my brush when I'm going from the pink into the yellow. So usually I rinse the brush when it's the darker color going into the lighter color. Okay, now I'm adding the green to the leaves. As I'm finishing up the leaves, I realize that I want to um, mix a light blue for in back of the word mom and making sure that the swirl there is dry. And I mixed up a real light blue color and I just thought it would set the name off a little better. So I don't think I mixed enough, so I'm mixing more. And it's just basically the blue, a couple strokes of the color blue with a couple strokes of the color white. And this is all up to you. I mean, you don't have to follow anything exactly because you can you could add pink here if you wanted. It's all up to you. Maybe your mom likes green, then add a light green. I try to look at what colors will accent or pop make another color pop. And with these cards, I usually do warm, cool, warm, cool in color tones. So because of that stripe and the colorful rainbow swirl is real warm looking to me. Actually, I guess it's only warm on one side. I just chose the blue because I thought it would make the, the lettering pop more than anything. So in between areas like this area now, I will actually shut the camera off and let it dry for a while. It doesn't look like I do, but I do. I'm mixing a light pink here and going back in making a real light pink on the flowers. And that's just white and the pink together. I've decided to go in and do the orange areas of the flower. So after I finished up these flowers, I actually let the painting rest for a little bit. And then I go back in and um, add the blue. It's going to be blue and purple, and that's a cool tone. Blues, Purples can be warm or cool, but this purple is cooler than most. Um, so I'm doing a cool line between the above the warm line there, because yellow and pink are are warm. And it's all a matter of play. I mean, if you mess up a little piece of paper, it's a little piece of paper. And you can still give it out as a card. You don't really have to mess it up. You can go over it with the Poshka, Posh pens if you want. So now I'm adding purple to the flowers. Now I'm going to be starting with the leaves, and you remember how I explained how to do the leaves? You have to have shadows, so I'm putting the shadow areas in the leaves. 
basically anytime a leaf is tucked behind a flower there's going to be a shadow and anytime there's going to be a shadow kind of in between the veins of the leaves the main vein and I'm just going back and I'm letting it set for a while then I'm going back and smoothing out the color a little it just gives it a time to dry just a little bit before I do bring more water back in and smooth it out. That time I got green on the background, I tried to lift it out. I hope that it lifted. I think it lifted. <laughs> and now I'm doing the same thing over here. It just gives the, the leaves more dimension to have the dark green. You could leave them one color. I just like to have two colored leaves. So I flipped the card over and I'm going to start with the leaves here, just the base in. And now I'll paint the centers of the flowers. And then I'll move on into the pink that's a little bit further away from the centers. There's a white area between the two. So they won't run together. As I'm finishing up the swirls, I'm deciding what color to put on the bottom, and I've decided to go with the pink and the purple. And I actually let the painting rest to dry between this the swirls and painting the bottom. It was just too close to the swirls to go ahead and paint. So I don't put the drying time in the video. It would just be kind of silly sitting there watching paint dry. So. And so I'm working real wet here so that the purple and the pink blend together well. And now I'll go up and I'll finish the flowers. I'm adding orange here around the flower. And then they'll go back and add pink darker pink stripes in the inside. And after that I'm going to add the dark areas to the leaves again in the where it pops behind the flowers I'm going to put a shadow. And then I will um, go back and blend that a little. And then I'll add where the leaves kind of turn. So uh, it's basically kind of an outline and then you go back and soften that outline. So there I'm creating the the shadowy part. Now I'm going to go back with clear water and blend. So what I do is I let it rest for a minute then I go rinse my brush with clear water and then just blend the color into the the dark color into the light color. And I'm working fairly fast so it won't dry. So I've let the card dry and these are the Posca pens and they're acrylic ink so they'll go on top of anything. So I'm adding some more details with the pens here. This is a bright pink. You have to shake the pens before you use them. So in some parts you'll see me shaking the pen. 
but you store them horizontal. So the pink and the purple, how they're laying is how you want to store them. And I'm just adding details of color to this flower to give it some pop and dimension. I'm adding dots and I'm adding swishes and I'm adding some veining in the leaves with the white. And you can clean the pen just by simply how you clean your brush. And they dry fairly fast, but I that is quicker than I would actually turn over the card. Here I'm adding pink to the edge, pink dots. So you notice that I clean it off on the towel every now and again. I'm adding pink dots to the blue part of the flower. You know, and this is just your preference, what you want to do here. I'm going to add yellow dots on some of the flowers. They, they come in 15 colors, and this is a medium tip pen. They have an extra fine, a medium, and a broad. I don't use the broad very often. I do use the medium tip a lot. So now I'm adding colors with white. I could also do that with the Sharpie pen because it's a nice white pen. And now I'm going to go around the name Mom with yellow because it's a contrast from blue. After adding the yellow here, I want to soften it a bit. So I think I'm going to take that pink marker and go around the whole thing with pink dots. It, it will just soften the, the blue transition there a little bit. So the whole thing I'm going to go down over the edge with just a series of small pink dots. Now I realize that I want some areas to fix some black areas that maybe got painted over or I want to be a little bit bolder than they currently are. So I brought out the Sharpie again and I'm going to go around some edges that just got lost during the painting process. So it's just to accent some areas. Trying to figure out what needs to be done. I don't go over the entire painting with the black, but I'll just choose some areas to bring back out again. So now I'm going to bring out those Walmart glitters that I have showed you by Studio G and I'm going to add them to different areas of the flower. This is the clear. The really cool thing about this clear is it's actually clear as you're using it. It doesn't dry clear like the other one is a milky color and it dries clear. This one's actually clear. And I'm going to add just a couple little accents with that gold. And then I'll let it dry. It takes about 15-20 minutes just like the other glitter glues to dry and then I'll flip it over. So this is going to be deceptive because it looks like I flipped it over right away, which I did not. And now I'm going to add the clear, clear to, I'm adding it to the yellow to again soften it a little bit because that yellow was really bold. 
So I want to just soften it with what I can. And I kind of jump around here, so I did half of the name and then I jumped to some other area. Now I'll finish the M. <laughs> this is how I work. Okay, so now I'm going to add some gold. I want to put a little edge around this black in gold. And then I'll add a couple details to flowers. After that's dry, I mark the flower where I want to cut it. And then I cut the flower out. I just do the upper edge where it connects with the card so it, the card can kind of hold itself together. So I cut around it, pop the flower out, tuck the card in, and there you have it. And I added the gems in there. I didn't show that part, but I added the gems on the flower.